in the next part of the lecture, we are going to talk about directional derivatives, right? So um, the intuition here is that um, imagine that, that you have like a, I don't know, a plane and at each point of the plane, you have the temperature. So and at each point of the plane, that there is a different temperature. Now, and then imagine that you are driving along the display, uh, well, um, driving along some road. Right? So the directional derivative is at, at, at every given a point. So the your um, you're going to be moving in the direction of, of, a, of a vector, right? So the rate of change of the temperature at your point, at your car, is going to be the directional derivative of the, this temperature function. Okay, so this is kind of the um, intuition behind it. Now, um, recall that we already know what partial derivatives are, right? So partial derivatives are rates of change of a function of two variables or more variables. So, I mean, if it is two variables, then uh, we are talking about partial derivatives with respect to x and y, right? Um, so they are the rate of change in the x and in the y direction, respectively. Now, um, in the same way, we can compute the rate of change in any direction corresponding to a unit vector. So th this is important. So th this is important that the vector is unit it, in the sense that the uh, length of the vector is, is one, right? So the norm of a vector, which is square root of the sum of squares of its coordinates, u1 square plus u2 square should be one. So this is what, what it means for a vector to be a unit vector, right? So u1 square plus u2 square should be one. Otherwise, it, it's not really a unit vector. Okay, so the rate of change uh, of the function f along u can be computed as follows. So uh, first we can look at the change of the um, value of the function between um, you know the original point a b and the point in the direction of the vector u or like h steps in the direction of a u right and th th this is what the picture looks like basically the blue thing is the graph of some function right and then um, when we kind of step in a certain direction so in the direction of a vector u uh, basically in that direction so the function is uh, changing so the rate of change in that direction is going to be our directional derivative right um so this is just the limit of this ratio as h tends to zero right well at the same time it doesn't really make a lot of sense to compute it according to the limit well you can do it but um what this really means, so notice that we can take this uh, expression f of a plus h u1 and b of um, and b uh, plus h u2 denote this as some new function g of h and compute g prime and evaluate it at the point h equals zero. So it's essentially just the, the same thing. All right, now um, there, there's going to be a theorem so that uh, in order to compute the directional derivative, that was the definition. So in order to compute uh, the directional derivative uh, along a unit vector u, what we do is we simply take the dot product of this vector u and the gradient of f evaluated at the point a, b. Okay, so it's, not, I mean, the computation is not really, is not really very hard. Right now, I am going to prove the, this theorem. So, because well, basically, even though you are not math students, um, I know for, for a lot of people, going through the proof actually helps understanding. Right. So, if in your case it does not help your understanding, then please just ignore the the, the, the proof. Don't worry about it too much. It's not going to be on exams or anything. But I I, I think that it's it's better to to prove it. So. Anyway, so let, 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 let me explain what, what I mean, right? So they, um, so as I already said, that uh, if, if you just take this expression and think of, of this expression, f of a plus h u1 and b uh, uh, plus h u2, 
as a new function, which is g of h, denoted as g of h, then this directional derivative is nothing else but uh, g prime of zero. All right, so let me uh, write it again. So what, what we do here, all right, so we have our function f of x, y, and as x, we substitute a plus h u1, and as y, we substitute b plus h u2. And then uh, after plugging it as x and y into f, we get an expression in h, and then we are differentiating it with respect to h. But then how do we do it? So according to the chain rule, we can just differentiate it with respect to h. So the, it, it means that the derivative of the, this expression uh, with respect to h, so let me just try df, dh is going to be the derivative of f with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to h plus the derivative of f with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to h, right? So this is, I'm going to just rewrite it as fx. Now, what is the derivative of x with respect to h, right? So this is the expression for a, x. Its derivative with respect to h is just u1, right? So times u1 plus f y times u2. But that's basically what I wanted to prove, exactly <laughs> this expression, right? So that, that's it. Okay, so the, the theorem is proved. Okay, uh, now in practice, it means the following. In practice, it means that in order to evaluate a directional derivative, what we do is we find just uh, familiar partial derivatives and then uh, to, to compute the directional derivative uh, along a unit vector u. So we take the dot product of the gradient vector with the vector u. Okay, so that's what you need to remember by basically this. So, and the theorem that, that I just proved is, is, is the reason why, right? So again, again so if you understand the, the, the proof, then it probably helps to, to remember. If you don't understand the proof, then you, you can just memorize the end result. Okay, so now uh, let me go through um, a couple of examples, okay? So in this example, uh, we are required to find the directional derivative um, along the unit vector given by the angle theta equals pi over six. So what does it mean? So it means that, let me uh, draw a plane x, y. So basically we have this. So the angle is pi over six. Pi over six is essentially 30 degrees. And the, so we, we take the unit vector in this direction. So the length here is one. And the essentially the first the first thing that we should do we should find the coordinates of the this vector u. Well, but then if you look at this, then this is essentially you know the, this you know the uh, hypo, so the, this is a right triangle. So the hypotenuse is one, right? So the two sides should be well essentially by definition a cosine and sine of pi over six, right? So this is like cosine of pi over six, and this is sine of pi over six. And so it means that our vector u is really, its first entry is cosine of pi over six. And the second entry is sine of pi over six. All right, and then uh, if you don't remember cosine and pi of sine, of, uh, cosine and sine of pi over six, so that there is a neat trick. So basically if you do this, if you take the symmetric triangle, right, uh, then, Pi over six is 30 degrees. So then this is going to be 60 degrees, 60, 60. So all the angles are 60 degrees. So all the sides should be uh, equal uh, and should be equal to one, right? And the Y here, which is sine of pi over six is one half of the full side. So which is what, how, how I know that sine of pi over six is, is one half. Well, but then cosine of pi over six can be found uh, as the so cosine of pi over six is really the square root of one minus sine squared of pi over six, right? So and th th this is how I know that cosine is square root of three over two. Okay, so um, 
what I did here, I, I mean, in, in this question, we are not given the vector u explicitly, so we have to kind of figure it out. So I just figured out that u is the vector whose first uh, entry is square root 3 over 2, and its second entry is, is 1 half. Okay, so now let me derive the um, the uh, directional derivative, right? So to, to derive the directional derivative, the first thing to do is to, to find the uh, gradient. So nebula f is the vector whose entries are fx partial derivatives of f with respect to x and y. With respect to x, uh, 3x squared minus 3y. Um, and with respect to y is minus 3x plus uh, 8y. Okay, so now uh, I'm doing it at the point 1, 2, right? Yeah, 1, 2. Okay. So x is 1, y is 2. At the point 1, 2, uh, we get 3 times 1 squared minus 3 times 2, negative 3. So minus 3 plus 8 times 2, 8 times 2 is 16, minus 3 plus 16 is 13. Okay, so the gradient vector is minus 3, uh, comma 13. So the answer is going to be just the answer, so the directional derivative of u uh, of f in along u um, at the point 1.2 is just nebula f at 1.2. Uh, dot product with u, right? So nebula f is minus 3, 13. u is um, square root 3 over 2 and 1 half. So we just take the dot product of the, these two vectors. So this is minus 3 times square root 2 over 2. So minus 3 square root 3 over 2 uh, plus 13 over 2. And that's the answer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that was one example. So here is another example. So let me go through the second example too. So again, so we are supposed to find the directional derivative of some function at a given point in the direction of the, this vector. So now notice that this vector is not a unit vector. So because the two uh, components here, the two entries, two and five, they do not, so their squares do not add up to uh, to, um, to one, right? So first we need to find the unit vector, so u, and this is going to be essentially just v divided by its own uh, norm. So this is going to be, well, 2i plus 5j divided by the norm, and then the norm is the sum of squares of the two coordinates. So this the square root of the sum of squares, so 2 square plus 5 square, so which is uh, 2 over, 2 square is 4, plus 25 is 29, and 5 over square root of 29. Okay, so th this is my u. Okay, um, now I need to take the dot product of u and nebula f. So nebula f, uh, first I differentiate with respect to x. So differentiating with respect to x, I will get 2xy cube. And then with respect to y. So with respect to y, uh, 3x square y square minus 4. So now I've got to substitute the values, right? So the values are 2 and negative 1. So now x is 2, y is negative 1. Okay, um, substituting the actual values, I will get 2 times 2 times negative 1, negative 4. And 3 times 2 squared, uh, 2 squared is 4, so 12 minus 4 is 8. So, and the final answer is going to be the dot product of these two. So this, the dot product of this, these two. So I've got to take 2 over square root of 29 times negative 4 plus 
5 over square root of 29 times 8. Um, and this is 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 plus 5 times is 40. So 40 minus 8 over square root of 29, which is 32 over square root of 29. And that's the answer. Okay, so here is the same solution printed out. So first we find u, and then um, we do all the calculations, and the final answer is 32 over square root of 29. And basically that was essentially it about directional derivatives. Of course, uh, for functions of three variables, the situation is essentially the same. So here is the definition of a directional derivative, and the formula that we use to compute the directional derivative is this, right? So in order to compute the directional derivative, we take the dot product of the gradient vector with the unit vector in the given direction. And same thing for uh, functions of more than two variables, more than three variables. Okay, so that was it about uh, directional derivatives. So please do this little quiz. And then uh, we have one more part after you do the quiz.